Hello YouTube and welcome to my second video of the 32 inch monitor series. This is the BenQ BL3200PT monitor with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. We are looking at the uh, monitor from BenQ. The physical quality of the monitor is good. It's also got a very good look to it. And we're looking at these specifications. It's a VA panel technology, vertical alignment. It's a standard 60 Hz monitor with a 4 millisecond reaction time, gray to gray. And it's also a flicker free LED backlight panel. We have a physical power switch as well as the power input, as well as the green audio in, two USB outs, one USB mini in for the OSD controller, and one USB 3.0 input for the hub. On the right side of the monitor we have the HDMI, DVI, VGA and display port inputs, as well as the headphone and USB 3.0 ports and an SD card reader on the bottom right. The monitor comes packaged with power cable, audio cable, USB cable, VGA cable, display port and DVI cable, as well as an HDMI cable, the special USB keypad and the manual and paperwork. This stand is raceable, it's tiltable and it's rotatable. The mechanical qualities of these stands are a little on the strong and stiff side. It's hard to set it properly. Uh, height adjustability is okay. You can turn it facing towards you. This works fine. And the portrait rotation mode works good. However, you need a lot of force to turn it. My nitpicking on this monitor would be that if you're using it in portrait mode, having it tilt back and lowering the position, the side input panel will hit the ground stand. Just a few notes on the BenQ. Its most notable features include the USB remote for the OSD functions, the SD card reader, as well as the bundled accessories. For calibration, I'm using a Spider 3 reading device with this. Cal GUI, in this case on macOS. I'm calibrating to a 140 candela per square meter luminance and a white point of 6500K. The uncalibrated white point is very good with close to 6500K. After calibrating it to 140 and 6500, we're looking at a contrast ratio of 1080 to 1. More importantly, we have a gamma coverage just shy of 100% for sRGB and the calibrated profile delivers a 0.84 delta E on average with a maximum of 3.73 and the maximum colors this panel is capable of are 80.3% of the Adobe RGB color profile. Looking at the long exposure of a black image, we can see the corners seem a bit more pronounced than on the Acer monitor. Ghosting effects on the BenQ BL3200 are much less pronounced than on the Acer and are fairly good. This is the BenQ BL3200PT. The OSD keys are touch sensors. I would prefer hard buttons. We have a quick select for picture modes. We have the input selectors. We have volume control. In the settings menu, we're going to look at the display mode, which offers auto pivot and input selectors. For the picture settings, we have brightness, contrast, sharpness, gamma, color temperature, hue, saturation. And if you're going to use the color profile from the link that I've attached in the description below, be sure to set your monitor to the same settings that I have.
the AMA is the adjustability for overdrive settings, which affects ghosting. The standard setting is the medium setting, which seems to be fine. The picture advanced menu offers picture mode that we want to set to user. Overscan is usually off and display mode full. For audio, you have volume, mute and input selectors. The system menu offers the custom keys that you can set on the monitor itself. It supports DisplayPort 1.1 and 1.2. And here are the USB controller settings that you can do. What I like about the settings on the BenQ is that the auto functions are all turned off, eco sensors and things like that, if you're using the user mode, which enables you to properly calibrate and profile your display. As always, I appreciate the precious time you've just spent watching my video. If you enjoy what you see, please consider supporting me for more high quality content. Anything will be helpful. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and please share the video on your favorite social media platforms. Be sure to watch the other three videos of this series, especially the fourth video as I will be comparing this monitor to its competitors and explain my personal opinion.